Also, one of my favorite items here is the sort of crossover point in the early 70s, this flyer where Patti Smith, who is a budding poet, as well as uh, Richard Hell also wanted to be a poet. A lot of these early punk rockers wanted to be poets, and so they get started reading their poetry. Here we can see the matchup of Gerard Malanga, who was a key figure in the Warhol scene in the 60s, now reading with in, in the inaugural event for Patti Smith's poetry here in 1971, getting together reading at St. Mark's Church. This really puts her on the map, partly because of the Warhol cachet of Gerard Malanga. And Warhol was there at the scene, and she writes about this in, in Just Kids. And Warhol at this time is moving away from the underground scene, but he still has a kind of imprint. So wherever he goes, that's what gets written up. And he is, he was famously called uh, the Pope in, in uh, the Pope of Pop in, in, in a number of um, books and interviews. You can read how just his presence seemed to sort of consecrate the event for an underground edgy sensibility. So that's, we can see sort of what's happening with Patti Smith, 1971. She has this moment reading poetry with Gerard Malanga. He takes this picture and actually is signed on the back and dated. So this is a, quite a rare print uh, photography of that moment as well. And then eventually she also moves into working with sound and putting her poetry to sound with a guitarist and also a, a rock journalist named Lenny Kay. Lenny Kay in 1972 puts out this album called Nuggets and it's a collection of garage band uh, from Flame and Groovies and, and um, psychotic uh, elevator, I believe. Uh, uh, there's a lot of bands here that are playing around with distortion, psychedelic lyrics, but he's sort of curating this early root sound to punk at the same time that he's working with Patti Smith and developing this kind of edgy sound world where she's using a kind of beat poetry and he's interested in trying to set that beat poetry into a, a proto-punk world, we might say, in, in, his, in his mind. Uh, the Stooges and the New York Dolls both represent these early, what we call proto-punk, this is all in hindsight, of course, proto-punk ideas of taking a sort of Rolling Stone sound and roughing it up, making it even more a streetwise than the Stones themselves could ever imagine. So. The New York Dolls sort of famously were a kind of drag, street drag version of the Rolling Stones, taking Mick Jagger's own sexual ambiguity and play with gender and ramping it up and putting it in the context of the kind of radical queer theater that was going on. David Johansson, the lead singer of the New York Dolls, was involved in the theater of the ridiculous uh, and so he was circulating with a lot of the Warhol uh, transgendered pioneers, what we would call drag queens in that day. Uh, so he was circulating with them and putting together this kind of rough street version of the Rolling Stones. 